Paul Connett, please tell us who you are and why are you here? I'm a retired professor of chemistry. I've been involved with waste management issues for 28 years. Quite unexpectedly, they tried to build an incinerator in our home county of northern New York. And at first I thought it was a good idea, but when I read more about the dioxins, etc., I opposed it. And um, in during that campaign against this incinerator, which took us five and a half years to beat, I was contacted by other groups around the region and then around the country. And to cut a long story short, over, over the last 28 years, this issue has taken me now to 62 different countries. And uh, the anti-incineration movement has essentially morphed into the zero waste movement, going from the po politics of no, no incineratory, to the politics of yes, see, Refuti Zero. Yes to Refuti Zero. Yes to sustainability. Why are you here? Well, I've come to see how far Zero Waste Romania has come because I was here about a year and a half ago, November 2012, and it was just beginning then. It was a big conference that you yourself organized with university professors, some politicians, some experts and activists from around the country and outside the country. So you were just beginning then. I remember there was a particular interest in uh, sustainable architecture. And uh, it was an exciting conference because everything was just beginning. So now I've come back to see where you're at. Where is, where is uh, Zero Waste Romania? Yes, where is Zero Waste Romania? And um, we, well, first of all, the exciting thing was uh, we, when I got here, that you told me you're on national television. <laughs> You've got to be on national television for 25 minutes. That doesn't happen very often. And you were very lucky because it was the International Transylvania International Film Festival. They're showing the movie Trashed. And I was the hook for that movie because I'm appearing it several, several times. But that gave the TV studio an, an opportunity to investigate this weird thing called zero waste. So we got off to a cracking start. That went well. The producer was very happy with the product. And then in the evening, we had a showing of the movie. And that attracted about 80 or 90 people, many of them young people, being exposed to the issue for the first time. Very excited. And if, as they were excited, I was also excited. And this morning we saw a mayor from a local community that's, who's got the message. And I think they're up to about 60% diversion already. And that's without even a, a, a place to deal with the organics. They're separating the organics, but they're sending it to a landfill at the moment. Once they've got a composting facility in place, they could be over 80% diversion. And then in this afternoon we went to see the head of the waste for the county of Cluj and uh, very positive, very positive. He, he, he did, I think, experimentally float the idea of incinerator, but as we all sort of jumped out of our seats, John, Marc Simon and myself and you all said, no, what, how, why, why would you consider uh, incineration? He very quickly backed off and said, no, I, I, I just wanted to hear what you felt about it, but we don't think that's a, a very good idea either. I believe that's what he said, and um, really wants to work with the activists, which is very exciting. When you get bureaucrats or politicians who are prepared to work with the citizens, I know that we're going to get some good, good solutions here, because the people are not the problem. The problem is usually a lack of political leadership. How do you see Romania's waste management policy? Well, again, it, it's, it's obviously uh, dependent upon, to a large extent, the politicians. We have often seen uh, incinerator companies put large donations into political parties in order to get the politicians acquiescing into approving uh, incinerators. And there's a lot of money. I mean, the, the incinerator company knows it's going to make a fortune over the next 20 years from these incinerators. Once the permit is signed, it's easy money. They know that. Therefore, there's money to invest in getting the decision to go their right way. 
that will of course waste a lot of time because if the Romanian citizens or anything like all the other citizens around the world, as soon as they hear that incinerate is being proposed, it will galvanize them into action. They will oppose the incinerator, but in the process they will educate themselves. So it's often good programs are born out of the fight. So I'm ambivalent about it. It, uh, it would be good to have one or two ding-dong battles against incinerator in Romania in order to get more and more people passionate about this, the, the solution, the alternative solutions. On the other hand, we could do without the bloodshed and go straight into uh, the positive solutions. So that's why talking to the mayor this morning was important. And what we need are case studies. We want, pe want Eleanor and the other activists in Zero Waste Romania want to be able to go to a town and say, I know Zero Waste sounds utopian, but they're doing it over here, or at least over here, they're already after one year, there's 70, 80 percent diversion from landfill. They're very happy with it. They've created some jobs. They're saving money. Once you've got those kind of models in place, it's much, much easier. You can, of course, point to models elsewhere today. You can point to Flanders, uh, the Flemish-speaking part of Belgium, 6 million people, 73 percent diversion from landfill, or in their case, incineration. You can point to over 200 communities in Italy that are over 70 percent, and I think it's 215 have now declared zero waste. Then, of course, we've got California, and we've got the uh, communities in Basque country in Spain, and some in Barcelona. Uh, again, uh, I think politicians need to hear that, that the citizens are not the problem. If once they realize it's important, once it's obvious that it's not difficult, it isn't difficult to separate, which is the key first step for the 10 steps, is to source separate, and especially keep the organics separate from the rest. Because once you pull the organics out and they go to a composting facility, you don't have the horrendous problems of landfills. You don't have landfills belching out methane. You don't have landfills producing leachate. You don't have landfills stinking, which makes them so unpopular politically on the one hand. And for the citizen, once you've taken the organics out, the rest is much easier to store. You don't need very much space and you can, you can put the paper and the cardboard and the bottles and cans. Uh, they can hang around for months if necessary. So that key first step of using these to get clean organics, to get it to agriculture, back to agriculture, is um, pretty straightforward. So it's, it, uh, most politicians think this is going to be very, very difficult, the hard work. They're not going to be voted back into office if they launch this thing. The very opposite. The very opposite. Is this the only explanation why politicians partly tend to love incinerators instead of other solutions? Or well, what's I think the reason that, that population and, and politicians want very different things concerning waste yeah. very often? Well, more often than not, most people are not aware of waste as an issue. Until it comes home in one way or another, until they're threatened by a landfill or an incinerator, or even people bring up the alternative solutions, they haven't thought much about it. For the politician, a lot of it is laziness. Uh, when you come, with an incinerator comes in and says, we'll build this machine, we'll take it all from you. All you've got to do, Mr. Politician, is organize the trucks. Instead of the trucks taking all the waste to a landfill, the trucks will take everything to our shiny new building and we will look after it. You just give us the money and we will look after everything. Uh, but having mentioned money, once the, the thing is started and then the public find out how much money it's going to cost over 25 years to pay back the capital costs and the interest and find out how little they're getting in terms of economic development, very few jobs, no spin-off industries. That's when it hurts politically uh, that you've saddled your community with an albatross, with a white elephant. Uh, and, and even now, we, we, if you look at Northern Europe, Western Europe, we've got Germany, Netherlands, Sweden and Norway importing waste to feed to their incinerators. What does that mean? It means that the citizens in those countries have found it a lot 
easier than ever expected to recycle and compost and re reuse, so the incinerators can't get their trash anymore, or lo not enough. And then it is absolutely absurd. Then the incinerator is burning resources, which the people know can be recycled and, and reused. So Europe has finally worked out that their emphasis on incineration was a huge mistake. I mean, the European Commission have actually mentioned this now. That, uh, and also looking to the 21st century or to, to into the 21st century we are now, uh, we can't waste those resources anymore. So right now we're delivering a double, what we say in America, a double whammy to our children. Not only are we using up their resources by burning them, but we are leaving them a toxic legacy in the ash and possibly in their food supply and the sediments of lakes and, and so on. So our zero waste plan, our 10 steps to zero waste are better for the community because there's jobs, small business opportunities, many more jobs, 10 times more jobs in what we're talking about. The money stays locally. It doesn't go to a different country. It's better for our health. There's less toxics from leachate from landfills, air emissions from landfills, air emissions from incinerators, ash exposure. It's better for our universities because we can involve our professors and students in zero waste research, recommending to industry better design of products and packaging, because industry has to play a part too. It's better for the planet because we're moving towards sustainability. I mean, as I've said elsewhere, any way you go, there are going to be problems with waste. There's no easy solution. If you go landfills, there are going to be problems. We know that. If you go incinerators, there are going to be problems. And if you go zero waste, there are going to be problems finding markets for certain things, making sure that the community accepts the composting, making sure you get the clean organics and so on. There are going to be problems. But the difference is the problems that you have to overcome with landfilling and incinerators, even when you've overcome them, have taken you in the wrong direction. You've not moved one inch closer to sustainability, even though you've paid a fortune for these disposal technologies. On the other hand, everything that you invest in zero waste takes you closer and closer to sustainability. Every ton you reuse, every ton you recycle, everything you repair, everything that you compost is taking you just a little bit closer to sustainability. And in the process, you've educated the public. The public are now involved in sustainability. And uh, you have got industry to think more and more about the design of products, getting rid of this horrible idea of built-in obsolescence. We want things to last. And return to reusable packaging, not disposable packaging. What is zero base waste? What's the short formula? Zero waste is four R's. Three, most people know. Most people know the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. And in that third R is composting. So reduce, reuse, recycle, and compost. That's community responsibility. The fourth R is redesign, and that's industrial responsibility. So to get to zero waste, we need community responsibility at the back end, where we're disposing of items that we don't want anymore, and industrial responsibility at the front end where these products and packaging are made. You put the two together, you get zero waste or darn close. Do we have experience with uh, the fourth R? How, how does industry react on it, this proposal? It, it's they want to sell their products. Yes, you know? they, they want built-in obsolescence. Absolutely. They live from it. We might shift to different industries. Uh, uh, elegance. We need elegance. You know, the first person to mention zero waste was Leonardo da Vinci, who was, uh, if you look at his brilliant designs, he often copied nature. Well, one of the things he may have noticed, which prompted this comment in 500 years ago, was that nature makes no waste. He probably knew that, and therefore he felt that human beings shouldn't make waste. So he was actually thinking of industry. He said one industry's waste should become the starting materials of, uh, for another industry, which is very much nature's uh, way.